Today we're going to be looking at the work of one artist. Her name is Inez Nathaniel Walker. And during this video and a series of videos that Intuit is creating, we will be able to deep, uh, do a deep dive into the work of one artist and be able to share their stories, talk a little bit about the materials they used, talk about the different uh, ideas or motifs that show up in their work. And today's artist, um, Inez and Daniel Walker, we are so fortunate in having three works that we're gonna look at together. The first one is this one. Uh, it's a portrait and Inez is someone who began making works of art while she was imprisoned. Uh, she ended up being imprisoned uh, due to homicide uh, out of self-defense and this was around the early 70s. Uh, pre um, her incarceration, she uh, had been a migrant worker working on farms, doing farm labor, and she migrated from South Carolina to um, up north in order to, you know, uh, escape, you know, all this very brutal farm labor. Uh, while she was incarcerated, she was taking some courses, she was taking English classes, and she was trying to stay out of trouble, um, as far as we know from people who knew her at the time. And one of her teachers, an English teacher in fact, found the stack of portraits that she had made and was really, really drawn to them and, and bought them from um, Nathaniel Walker. And that's how we came to have uh, many of her drawings, um, you know, out in the world. Uh, the, this one in particular is really fascinating for a few reasons, um, a few different details that come out uh, in the works that uh, you'll see um, as I move on. And one is just the intricate detail she uses when she is depicting hair. So here she does it uh, through pencil. It looks like that's graphite. And to these sort of gentle swerves that gives this kind of hair this bounce. Uh, even though this person, um, this woman, has very, very short hair, you can see some of that movement in that hair by the way that she draws um, on the paper. You also get this very piercing look, this very deep look into uh, the person's eyes, uh, which is something that reoccurs in other portraits. and. Uh, Part of what draws us to the eye is that uh, Inez, Nathaniel Walker, draws uh, the, the eyelashes going around the eye. They're like these sort of C's, you know, kind of in the letter form of a C that swirl around and, and really captivate you um, as you're looking at this drawing. Another thing is that uh, the portraits usually have some sort of fashion element to them. Like, uh, for example, here we have this necklace and what looks like some sort of embellishment or some sort of kind of netting at the neck here. So it has beads and then some netting at the neck. Um, and perhaps it's a necklace, but also, you know, as I look at it more, perhaps it's part of a shirt, uh, part of a dress that uh, is being shared here. And of course, there's this red lip, you know, which is, you know, very fashionable. And, you know, whenever you want to feel fancy um, and make a statement, you know, a red lip is a great way to do it. And these drawings are on you know, paper that she would, at least when she was in prison, definitely uh, what the art teacher would share with her or English teacher would share with her, whatever she would find. Uh, many of them are on the backs of uh, the Prison Gazette, uh, this publication that was done at the prison. And there are, you know, stories out there about how she would make portraits of some of the inmates that were in there with her, uh, though she would often draw from memory. 
um, and not necessarily you know name her portraits and say this is exactly who I'm depicting um, even though some of the details that she shares are so particular and so interesting it really makes you wonder you know who was this you know who had this magnificent necklace or who had this like beautiful red lip or this elaborate hairstyle uh, and that's like one of the questions that keeps us coming back to the portraits uh, and I'll show you two more in the next room I'm standing in front of two more portraits by Nathaniel Walker and these two are so great side by side and I'm so glad that you're able to see them together like this what I want to touch on is what I had mentioned before about the previous portrait which is this focus on the hair and the patterns of the hair and the way that she um, made these very consistent uh, marks to get the hair. So for example, on this portrait we have here, we have this man with an afro and in this one it looks like uh, Walker also used pencil and she um, wasn't as methodical in, as in the first uh, portrait but here she does these kind of quick uh, squiggles around to show us you know the texture of the hair and to show us kind of this uh, volume of the hair and she uses the same type of gesture to show us the goatee that this man has uh, and with the goatee she also uses a pen it looks like so you have two different kinds of colors and textures when you um, have two different materials as you see here and you also notice that uh, Walker again does the eyelashes in this wavy pattern that goes around the eye in this sort of C shape um, which makes us you know really focus in on the eye uh, and this is a side profile which is different from the first portrait we saw um, and though even though it's a side profile the eye is still looking straight at us and we're still looking straight at the eye so for Walker you know that was a uh, something that she wanted us to take notice of. Uh, to go back to the fashion part of these portraits, uh, this one here in particular has so many accessories um, and so many patterns uh, which appear uh, in you know both of these portraits and also in the one we just saw. We have this shirt that has this horizontal stripe. We have this bow here, maybe it's a, like a bolo tie of some sort. And this was done in the late 70s. It's um, from 1977. So, you know, perhaps the fashions of the time are on display here. Uh, then we have this belt that also has all of these embellishments to it. And Walker, you know, wanted us to see, you know, how decked out this man was, uh, all the uh, textures that um, uh, this person was wearing. Uh, and like I mentioned, uh, she put all these visual details in these portraits, though we may not necessarily know who this person is. In the background here, you'll see different patterns. Uh, these were done, it looks like, with pencil and color pencil. Uh, and these patterns are also present here in these other portraits. You know, it gives this effect of wallpaper, this effect of, you know, just using the entire page. Uh, which is interesting because if you see here, the hair is cut off. And up here, you also see the hair that's cut off. So, you know, the hair um, didn't fit the frame. Uh, however, we have all of these um, patterns all around this person. As we look at both of these portraits together, we notice one more detail that is really worth talking about, which is the skin color of both of these uh, people uh, that Walker decided to draw. Now, Walker was a black woman herself, and in these two portraits, you see her depicting uh, two 
uh, black people as well and you get those details of course through the hair the afro and um, you know these particular ha hairstyle that um, were popular um, in the african-american community especially if you're thinking about the late 70s and the skin color is something that comes up uh, especially because as you look at these portraits you get the sense that these are very specific people now the questions still remain like is this with someone who she knew is this someone who she met uh you know we may not know that however we can see that they're very particular people particular style particular hairstyle and of course a particular skin color and here we have um our male sitter um, with a darker skin tone and our female sitter with a lighter skin tone. Uh, one of the conversations that I have in my community, I'm a Latina, is around the issues of uh, who is represented and how we represent each other, whether it's through works of art, whether it's through culture, and definitely the specificity of um, our identity through skin color, our identity through language is something that's really important. And I wanted to draw the attention here because we're looking at the work of a black woman who is depicting other um, black people and it's uh, important to see how that identity is also part of the story here. Thank you so much for joining me as I walk around the museum and introduce you to so many different works of art. I encourage you to continue to follow us as we make videos focusing on single artists or on different themes. Uh, thank you so much.